Let, let's talk about business, and uh, you see that's a very romantic Im image, romantic design to talk about business. As you can see, well, as, as you may know now, I have, well, understand I'm French, so you can see me on the picture, and uh, I can never refuse a kiss from a princess, of course. Uh, uh, let's see what the business is going to, to lead us to. Uh, to be more serious, if, if we go back to the past 30 or 35 years, and uh, most of you have been potentially in marketing or doing some studies or research, you know that brands have been really looked upon in a very how could I say, metric way. We've looked at all those drivers, return investment, KPIs, measurement, brand value, and so on. Uh, this has been working and still works really well, but potentially we could also think that there's not only the brands to be looked upon, and that at some point we should maybe step back and look at what business is about. Not only the brands, but also what business is about and what is the responsibility for being in, a, being in business. The second thing is, we live in a, in a world now of no compromise. Uh, no compromise on anything and you will see, you will understand hopefully that now if uh, we don't accept that we live in a world of talents and that everything has changed, it's not only about branding, it's about building different businesses that we're going to face and potentially be threatened with. So. The, the second thing here is to talk about creativity. Things have changed, really changed in the past 15 years and has, a huge, has had a huge impact on everything. For example, if we go back to those very classical measurements on brands, you can easily understand that most of the brands you live with or the businesses that impact your lives today wouldn't have had any chance to get any fund or any money from any banker 40 years ago. That's all about creativity. That's about innovation. That's about seeing things in a different way. That's about having new ideas. Just one example, the basic one is Google. Who would think that become what has become today? Meaning that there are different influen influencers and that creates different drivers. And originally it was, it was not about being a brand. It, it was about really looking at business differently and creating different businesses. That is about challenging the old rules. The old rules that we've learned 25 or 30 years ago in, in, in our universities, now innovation is looking at things so differently that any minute, any hour, we can see new ideas breaking the old rules. That means several things, or that has several impacts in, in our view. It's, it has a lot to do with changes not only in the rules, but also in the beliefs. I mean, that huge amount of creativity is happening at the same time that our beliefs worldwide are completely changing. Meaning that we radically see the pillars of our beliefs changing in the past 15, 20 years. Our beliefs in politics, our beliefs in religion, our beliefs in the economy. I'm just back from Silicon Valley for I was there during five or six days. They absolutely don't care about politics. They don't care about the economy. They don't care about all this. They just live with their ideas, their innovation, and their creativity. And they build businesses every day. That's, that's something we have to understand because there's not going to be any way back on this. I mean, it's one thing happening is that business of today is going to shape our future. Brands definitely exist, and they are the real differentiators between businesses, that's how we put a name on things and how we consume, but business is going to shape our future in a very different way. That has to do with choice and freedom. And freedom and choice is not something which is given to us. I think this is also something that creates new responsibilities for all of us. There are many problems we need to understand and uh, there are things that, because of choice, because of freedom, are scary or potentially really interesting. For example, so, so sociological impacts or socio impacts. For example, when you understand when you understand that now part of the lands that used to be worked for creating food are now uh, cultivated to produce energy. That's a direct consequence of the absolute need of growth. 
So is it the right way to do things? Potentially not, but this is really happening. The second thing, and that's a major threat, is that need for growth and the fact that everyone is looking after growth because the world has decided to live, not to live without growth, that means that we are facing the biggest shortage ever, which is shortage of talents. Meaning that at the same time, we have more and more people in the world, more and more people on the planet, less and less educated, with the absolute need to go for growth. And what's going to happen is that all these people who have a lot of talent and will want to go where growth is, they are only going to go where growth is happening. Meaning that we're, the world is going to be really divided into 10% of the world, again 90% of the world, talented people going for growth, the rest of the world trying to follow it. I think this disconnection can be a threat and we have to be very careful. And that's where I'm going to come back on how business can be beautiful. Individualism will create all these kind of problems. And we have to be very careful, and this is one of the purpose of the book we wrote a year ago, which is to say, we all have a responsibility. If business has to be beautiful and has to become a new pillar of belief, then there is a role to play for each of us. If business is a solution, and we believe it can be a solution, we have to be very careful on how we handle it. Then, let's go to something which is about consciousness. The difference, uh, the other day I was listening to Professor John Searle in, in Berkeley, and he was talking about being conscious and consciousness. And he was saying, you know, the big difference uh, between uh, you or us and your PC is that you are conscious and he's not conscious. Meaning it's not a matter of speed. Your PC can, and if you read the Chinese room, which is very interesting, you will see your PC can speak Chinese and read Spanish in a second. You can't, but your PC wouldn't do it if you hadn't told him to do it. So it's your conscience that makes things happen. Meaning every time you work in a business or you act in a business, you have to be very careful that the more conscious you are, the more you will deliver something that will benefit to most of the other people that are around you. Then I think consciousness is also about taking care of the social responsibility you have when you build a business. There is a social responsibility for every one of us. I think there's a very, very interesting case study that you might know is that hospital in India uh, managed by Dr. Shetty, who that guy one day decided that it was absolutely impossible uh, or unacceptable not to try to, to do surgery, heart surgery, for a thousand dollars. Saying, if we can't manage to have everyone have access to this huge problem of heart attacks in the world, why should I be a surgery? He created hospitals, he's got 10,000 beds, he does heart surgery for one thousand dollars, and it's the safest hospital in the world. Meaning that you can do business and you can create businesses having social responsibility. The second thing is, you have to understand that this shortage of talent is something that you can face and you can act against. I think there's a role for each one of us in the business, which is to make sure that we culture and we deliver knowledge to the others and to people working with us. The other thing is, we have to consider that knowledge sharing is absolutely not anymore about stealing ideas. That was for yesterday. Today, and when you go to those places that create businesses all day, they absolutely, yeah, of course, they protect their data, but they are more than happy to share and to share their knowledge and, and, and to throw it to the biggest benefit of everyone. Meaning that providing access to ideas, developing new businesses, is a kind of thinking about building a new set of values for the business. Then, if we go to the values or the value and the benefits out of it, let's consider that broader meaning can lead to broader value. That has a direct or it's an impact also a cause and a consequence of your businesses. And if we then said that those pillars of politics, economy, religion, which I talked before, were to be rebuilt by having a different idea, a big idea, about what the business is, 
then we could say, we could imagine that business is potentially the new pillar for our world to deliver something that really will contribute to a better world for everyone. Then, if we consider this and we decide to look ahead, <coughs> then it's going to create new communities, different communities, even though we're going to face the same problems, same threat that we've seen before. Nevertheless, new communities to be built. I would like to identify th potentially three core values to share with you that could contribute in each of our businesses to contribute to something different. Let's talk about, for example, integrity. Integrity is a word that many people today would laugh at. Lo laugh? Laugh at, yeah. Uh, in, in businesses saying, oh, come on, integrity, what does it mean? Well, integrity, if we looked at it in, in a different way, and we said that integrity was a clear sense of purpose and a clear sense of purpose delivering success. If we had a second set of values around curiosity, curiosity definitely when we look at everything that's happening or has happened in the past 15 years, nothing would have happened without curiosity. And curiosity is not really attached from the very beginning to brands, it's definitely attached from the very beginning to businesses. The way those guys, those people, I love it because in the UK you say hi guys, it can be women, men or whatever, you're hi guys anyway. So those guys, you know, guys build businesses. Curiosity, let's say, we could define it as looking at our business in a restless way. Always thinking that we have to go back to the big idea. So in a restless way, that's curiosity. The last one could be elegance. That's a contribution to a better world. Elegance, just the way of trying to be simple in everything we do, simple in everything we say, and simple in everything we try to teach to the people working with us in our businesses. The second thing about elegance is also to be persuasive, meaning not trying to bullshit anyone, just trying to develop strong arguments. Put those three sets of values together, integrity, curiosity, elegance, that's definitely a set of values that can contribute to really nice businesses and good businesses. The conclusion I'd like to go to is the idea of no hiding place. I mean, today everyone knows everything. And even more, everyone can have the same idea at the same time. So there is a clear issue about our responsibility. Because if everyone has the same idea, it's a lot about how the idea is going to be implemented and what set of values you're going to put behind the business you're going to develop. The fact that we are all more visible implies that we are all more accountable. And if we don't accept to be more accountable when we succeed in business, is if we don't accept this, is going to create huge risks. We cannot afford now to let people aside. The other thing is if we do not change, if we do not accept all those constraints, constraints, risk or opportunities of having beautiful businesses, then it's a lack of responsibility. And if we don't take this responsibility, it's going to lead to isolation. There's going to be the beautiful businesses on one side and there's going to be no business on the other side. The talents on one side, no talents on the other side. Education on one side, no education on the other side. I believe that the new battle is definitely for a new battle for good business. What is good business is definitely looking at things we've just discussed right now, looking at them differently. I think we should wake up for different ways of doing business. I think when we go for, or if we try to manage everything to do good business and to fight for more open knowledge and innovation, then yes, business can be beautiful. Thank you.